evening and welcome to another episode of the Youth Chat. This is the Mara Eye. I'm Franco Duer and today on the bench I'm hosting one of Kenya's finest all the way from Kitui to the world. <laughs> <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure hosting you. Yeah, thank you very uh, much. Mr. Ken Muticia. Yes. Yes, uh, the motivational speaker. <laughs> Man of many titles. <laughs> I don't want to exhaust them in the introduction. <laughs> First and foremost. Yes. Uh, how are you? I'm very fine. Yes. Yes. How is the coronavirus pandemic taking you? Uh, I think Corona, I can say it has really affected me, mm -hmm. but it has also presented an opportunity for me mm -hmm. to think on how better I can better my community mm -hmm. and how better I can uplift the, the young life. Mm -hmm. Yes. So after the salutation, somebody is wondering who is uh, Mr. Ken Muticia or Kennedy Muticia? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I'm Kennedy Muticia Joseph, mm -hmm. and uh, I come from Kitui County, from a small village called Kilungo Village mm -hmm. in Kitui Central Sub County, Changuida Eastward. And uh, I'm, uh, at the same time, I'm also a student at Masaimara University. I pursue Bachelor of Arts in Community Development. Mm -hmm. I'm in my fourth year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can say that is me as a person at yes. the personal level. And the other part, Kit from Kitui to the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes, normally uh, I have that tag which I normally use mm -hmm. from Kitui, Kenya to the world. Mm -hmm. Because I believe my work as a person, as a community development practitioner, I'm impacting lives from my village, which is in Kitui. Mm -hmm. From Kitui then I go to the whole Kenya and then at one point I'll go to the world, mm -hmm. where I'll impact lives globally mm -hmm. yes so somebody might want to ask what have you done in kitui or from kilungi village where you come from uh, I, I can say even before i go to that extent mm -hmm. i think we, we need to get this bit very clearly that apart from i being a student i'm also the programs coordinator of urafiki ujerumani community-based organization mm -hmm. which is a collaborative and participative group in kitui county mm -hmm. but which as friends living in Germany who mostly fund our activities. Mm -hmm. So by that fact, Urafiki Ujerumani has given me a platform where I can where I can better impact the community. And from that I've done several projects which I can say that I'll be able to share with them as we go on. So the projects that you do with Urafiki Ujerumani, mm -hmm. which type which types of projects they are they and uh, uh, in what way do they benefit your local community? Mm, I can say that Urafiku Jerumani mainly focuses on, 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 on four key areas. Mm -hmm. And number one is quality education. We want to be the organization, the grassroots community organization in Kitui mm -hmm. that is making sure that our children back in our grassroots villages are accessing quality education. At the same point, we, number two, we want to promote health care. Healthcare, in terms of that, we want to ensure that our grassroots villages in Kitui can access healthcare mm -hmm. at, at any point that they need it, mm -hmm. and we want to support them. Mm -hmm. Number three, we are doing skills development. Mm -hmm. In skills development, here we are targeting the young people, where we want to make sure that each and every young person in Kitui, by, by, the, by 2022, mm -hmm. we give at least 100 young people skills mm -hmm. that they can have and be able to transform their lives mm -hmm. and their lives at home. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we do environmental conservation, which is also very key because as a person and I'm an, an, an environmentalist, mm -hmm. I love environment so much. Mm -hmm. So as Urafiku Jerumani, we also do things to do with the environmental conservation and that is mostly including tree planting. Mm -hmm. And then we, we also do part of value addition. And value addition means more of like we want to empower the already existing groups so mm -hmm. that they can be able to, they can be resilient and at the same time they can be self-reliant mm -hmm. in their lives. Mm -hmm. So somebody might want to ask, why is, why is it only in Kitui and not any other part of Kenya? And while answering that, uh, kindly mind to answer who gave birth to this uh, Urafiku Jerumani and how did it start? Uh, I, I can say, your question is so good and mm -hmm. I love it so much mm -hmm. because uh, as I told you at the beginning mm -hmm. and from my statement mm -hmm. is that from Kitui Kenya mm -hmm. to the world mm -hmm. that charity begins at home. There is no way I can say that I want to impact the whole world at a goal. Mm -hmm. So we start 
at the basic grassroots village in Kitui mm -hmm. so that we can be able, after we have impacted as many lives as we can in Kitui, mm -hmm. we can go now go to Kenya and to, then to the world. And you might ask yourself, why did we choose to start with Kitui? Yes, actually. Because, as you know, Kitui is classified as a, as a semi-harid and area. an arid area. area. The Asals. The Asals. And therefore, we, Kitui, the residents of Kitui face a lot of problems because even including that even we, we receive little rainfall, mm -hmm. we, we, we go through drought seasons, mm -hmm. and despite that we have many other challenges that mm -hmm. we undergo as residents of mm -hmm. Kitui. And therefore, it calls for, for partners and the stakeholders to come together and think forward on how we can take Kitui forward. Mm -hmm. And that is our resolution as Urafiku Jerumani that we are making that we want to start with the grass village in Kitui, then to the whole county, then to Kenya, and then to the whole, mm -hmm. to the whole globe. Mm -hmm. Because as I told you even earlier, we are also working with a group in Germany. Mm -hmm. So it means that even where they are, that group which we are working together with, they are also impacting lives in Germany. So you see, uh, we are doing what we call, it's a step-by-step -step development. So we can, like uh, they kind of operate in Germany and operate in Kenya at the same time? I'm, I'm saying that we, we have two groups mm -hmm. and Urafiku Jerumani itself is, is a community uh, based organization which is mm -hmm. registered mm -hmm. in Kitui, Kenya. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we are partnering with friends who are living in Germany. Mm -hmm. Have you got me right? Yes, I've got you That right. is what actually we are doing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, on, on our Urafiku Jerumani mm -hmm. came into being, mm -hmm. I can say Urafiku Jerumani was a decision and it was a, a good idea of, of one of us mm -hmm. as Urafiku Jerumani, who is currently our, our, our pioneer leader mm -hmm. by the name Lillian Fruit. Mm -hmm. Lillian Fruit is a doctor in Switzerland who lives in Switzerland, but she has been living in Germany. Mm -hmm. But she's the one who gave birth to the idea of Urafiku Jerumani mm -hmm. because she thought that despite the fact that she works in Germany, she works in Switzerland, that she can be able to give back to society. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, Lillian wanted to have people who could assist her to actualize these dreams. And that is now where Kennedy comes in mm -hmm. as the program mm -hmm. coordinator. You know, when we talk about Rafiku Germani, we only see the face of Kennedy. <laughs> but there are others like Lillian. Yes, there are others like Lillian, mm -hmm. who and other, uh, other team, I work also work with another team of around five members, mm -hmm. who we directly assist one another to roll out our program. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, have you not seen partnerships with other government bodies and NGOs within uh, Kitui? I can say that uh, we are still in the process of identifying partners. Mm -hmm. Currently, we are partnered mostly with government institutions, such as mostly with the primary schools, mm -hmm. with the secondary schools, and even at the grassroots level, we are mm -hmm. partnered with the, 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 the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government, mm -hmm. where we have mostly involved the, 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 the village the, the, the village national administrative structures including mm -hmm. the village chief mm -hmm. we have the county where we involve the we involve the, the village administrators and the ward administrators those are the people we can say that we have directly linked with them including now the primary schools I was telling you mm -hmm. because we have done a lot of programs in, in our grassroots village primary schools and we have also had in, in the secondary schools where we, we have been doing our program. Mm -hmm. So I can say those are our main partners whom we have been partnering with up to now. Mm -hmm. But we are looking forward to partner with other organizations. Mm -hmm. Even as we continue, I'll tell you more of the programs that mm -hmm. we have. Mm -hmm. And I tell you who are, like, whom do we think that, that they will be our main prospective partners yeah. as we go forward. Yeah, thank you very much. At the, at the very start, you talked about the roles of Rafiku Germani. Mm -hmm. But what are, what are some of the achievements that so far you've done as Rafiku Germani within Kitui? Just five of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just dwell on, mm -hmm. uh, just to be brief, let me just dwell on the this year's achievement. Mm -hmm. And I can say that at the beginning of this year, we are able to give four wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. And these four wheelchairs, why did we give four wheelchairs? We realized that most of the people who are living with disability, and especially the physical disability, who are physically handicapped, those who cannot be able to walk, were finding a challenge in how they can mobile from one place to another. Mm -hmm. And especially we wanted to deal with kids. Not only kids, but the young people who are between the ages of 
like like the ages of uh, let's say two years up to up to around 25 years mm -hmm. because these are the people we realize that we have disabilities in our area mm -hmm. and therefore we identify for 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 for, for, for groups of people. for four groups mm -hmm. for that is for individuals mm -hmm. whom we gave wheelchairs mm -hmm. and uh, the criteria was that uh, we identify that this we, we found that these people had a wheelchair before mm -hmm. but this wheelchair you find that it was donated to them like 10 years ago, 10 years ago. so you find that this wheelchair is is in a dilapidated mm -hmm. condition. condition it cannot be mm -hmm. used more if it, you cannot use it to go maybe to, to, to school mm -hmm. at the same time so mm -hmm. we, we were giving them a new wheelchair and at the same time for those who maybe did not have a wheelchair because we are we had the one case of a kid who had not already got a wheelchair mm -hmm. so we, 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 we gave the kid a wheelchair mm -hmm. number two we did another program which we call uh, uh, shoes for kids mm -hmm. shoes for kids is another program which for sure it is beautiful mm -hmm. because uh, 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 shoes for kids targets the the the, the vulnerable uh, students in Kitui mm -hmm. who, who walk to school barefooted. Barefooted on top. I, I don't yes. know if you have ever had this feeling of mm -hmm. walking to school mm -hmm. barefooted. Mm -hmm. Just you can just imagine going to school. You are barefooted. You can just imagine the zones that can mm -hmm. freak you on your way to school. You can just imagine walking on the Urano. Especially without, when it's sunny. When it is sunny mm -hmm. and the sand is so is so sunny, it's mm -hmm. so hot. You can just imagine that condition. Even stepping on the Uranus mm -hmm. around 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 your primary school, mm -hmm. it is one of the things that even are contributing to to, to, to poor performance in most of our public primary schools mm -hmm. in Kitui County. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as a person and as Urafiku Jerumani, we decided to to start this program by the name Shoes for Kids, so that we can help these kids at least get an an opportunity to walk with a shoe. Mm -hmm. And through working with a shoe, we are going to give them an ample time in class. Because if you have a shoe, it means that maybe no one has pricked you when you are coming to school. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you can be able to concentrate. Mm -hmm. So we, we started this program. We gave, uh, we, 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 we gave uh, 41, 41 pairs of rubber shoes, Umoja rubber shoes, mm -hmm. to grade 1 pupils of uh, St. Patrick's Mutuni Primary School and and uh, and uh, Kilungu Primary School, which is my my, my former primary mm -hmm. school, but that does not end there. Uh, in sep in September again, we will have the same program for shoes for kids mm -hmm. in September. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, we had another program which is called Pens for Kids. Mm -hmm. Now, Pens for Kids, you know, there's this Kiswahili saying which says, like um, I, I cannot really trace it very well, but uh, like. As a farmer, you need to have a jembe. I, I think you can help me. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, you cannot go to the shamba without without your jembe. Without your jembe. <laughs> now, this is the, the same same thing because you find that most of the parents cannot even afford even a pen, mm -hmm. in which costs even shil ten shillings. Ten shillings or even five. They are concentrating on putting the food on the table. Mm -hmm. So you find these are the things that are making most of the students not perform. Mm -hmm. Because just imagine a student is coming to school and has no pen. So that means what? That this student is going to steal a pen from another student. Mm -hmm. And this student will not be able maybe to take notes which the teacher is dictating. And therefore we decided to address this problem by giving. We, 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 we actually gave, we, we gave more than 1,000 pen. Mm -hmm. To, to to grade to, 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 to class six and and the uh, class six that is now we call them grade the grade, grade the six grade, the grade six the grade six and uh -huh. grade seven learners uh -huh. of these two schools again uh -huh. that is in Patrick's Mutuni Primary School and Kilungo Primary, Kilungo school. Primary school. So these are programs that we are also continuing again in September we'll give them. Then we have also another program called Books for Kids which we normally accompany it with the uh, which we normally accompany it with an, with that program for shoot mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. for for pens for kids. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm very happy even to tell you that uh, we, we we personally I wrote a proposal on behalf of Rafik of Germany, mm -hmm. and it is so privileged. I wrote it to to an organization in US by the name Darien Book, mm -hmm. and uh, we we are going to receive uh, already. The, the, it is it is on transit, and it is coming to Kenya. Mm -hmm. We are going to receive more books especially books that can equip most of the libraries mm -hmm. in, uh, in 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 village 
in, in the village schools in, in our area. Mm -hmm. So that's also a privilege for us. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, this month, this, this coming month, I can say we are going to do a program by the name What Next After Form 4? Mm -hmm. And in this program, we are going to focus on the Form 4 graduates. Mm -hmm. Those who have just graduated from, from high school now. Mm -hmm. And we are going to give them an opportunity where they can come and we mentor them on careers. Mm -hmm. We guide them on mm -hmm. which, which careers do they okay. think is the best. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we, we, we give them an opportunity to, to, to also get to interact with the industry. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry for cutting you short on uh, some of the things that you've done through Rafiku Germany. I know the list is very endless. Yes, yes. yes. So in the process of doing uh, most of the things that you've been talking about, it's like uh, there is laxity on part of the Ministry of Education in ensuring that these things are available to the kids with the introduction of the free primary education. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the challenges that you have encountered? Uh, have you not seen some people of the community come to politicize some of the things that you do? Because uh, that's a very big problem in Kenya currently. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, you are very right, mm -hmm. and I concur with you. Mm -hmm. In short, politics is part of community. Mm -hmm. And it's part of life. And it's part of life. Mm -hmm. And even in, in, in a natural setting, mm -hmm. and mostly as a human being, you are born a political mm -hmm. being. And therefore, we find politics each and every day. People come and criticize us, but at the end of the day, we remain strong. Mm -hmm. And just as you have said about the laxity, mm -hmm. yes, I believe there is also the laxity on the part of the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. But as you know, like we cannot always keep on saying we are waiting for the government to do something. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's why I like this quote by one of the American presidents, mm -hmm. which says that, do not ask what America can do for you. Mm -hmm. Ask what can you do for America. For America. So it is about a personal initiative. Mm -hmm. Despite, like, we are supplementing government mm -hmm. efforts. Yes, the government is trying the way it can to provide mm -hmm. these resources. But at the end of the day, you find that the government has limited resources. Mm -hmm. And to it needs partners to reach all these mm -hmm. people. And that's, why we are, that's where we are coming mm -hmm. as Urafik Ujerumani. Mm -hmm. That's yes. where Ken is coming mm -hmm. as a person. Just hold it there. Yes. We are taking a break. And after the very short break, we'll be back with more. Uh, you are also a civic educator for women and the youth and you are also a motivational speaker tell us this about this journey uh, just like I, I had said before uh, i've been mostly involved in things to do with the community mm -hmm. because i believe that is where i am i am born to impact mm -hmm. and uh, i can say that i am i'm i'm a youth and women civic educator mm -hmm. and at the same time I do also play the role of a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, I can say that the journey of maybe motivational speaking is a journey which began long ago and especially during the days I was in high school mm -hmm. back in St. Thomas Aquinas Kalawa Boys back in Kitui mm -hmm. and uh, I just felt motivated it, even after my high school that I could impact generations. Mm -hmm like i could talk to some young people and they could listen to me mm -hmm. currently i've been able to speak in more than 50 schools including day schools and sec and boarding secondary schools mm -hmm. but mostly in kitui mm -hmm. i've also done a school in uh, in, in kajado by mm -hmm. the name baraka on toye secondary school and uh, just recently i was in saint monica mulut girls just mm -hmm. a week ago and I, I, the feeling just that I just want to share with these young people on matters or now they can build themselves or now they can utilize their future. Mm -hmm. This has been my biggest drive mm -hmm. in all my in, in my motivational talks. Mm -hmm. And even to note as I finish on that bit mm -hmm. is that I've also been talking in, 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 in different universities and I have had an opportunity to talk at uh, J Quart, that is the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Mm -hmm. I've talked to the Catholic community I've been able even to talk to some of the family groups there mm -hmm. on different issues concerning the young people and mm -hmm. how they can grow themselves. And also I've been able, I've been having different sessions here at our university at Masai Mara mm -hmm. University. Mm -hmm. So I can say the journey of motivational speaking has been, has been great. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for that. You know, you know the problem that we have with most uh, motivational speakers is that they always tell you the impossible that is possible. Now you find, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you are not that kind of, you know, when you are in high school, 
uh, for the rest of the term, you could be lazy. Then when one night when a motivational speaker comes to speak to you, you could have your timetables there, everything. Now you are ready. You are now motivated for life. No, 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 no. You know, uh, motivational speaking is a calling in itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, for sure, personally, I don't do it for payment. Mm -hmm. I do it because it's something which comes from me. Sometimes you go to some schools, mm -hmm. they, don't give an, they don't give you a stipend, mm -hmm. well and good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go to schools, they recognize what you have done for them. But at the end of the day, what I al always recognize in any session that I go for the young people, mm -hmm. to mentor them and to encourage them and to counsel them, mm -hmm. I only just want, just li like you can't change everybody mm -hmm. at a go. Mm -hmm. So even when you go to a school with that mentality that we had even in our high school days, mm -hmm. when I go to a school, I just want like, even if, if, if I impact just 20 students mm -hmm. or 5 students, mm -hmm. that would be my greatest gift mm -hmm. that I think even going forward that mm -hmm. it will greatly bless me going forward. Mm -hmm. Because the point is just, I just want to impact some people. Mm -hmm. Because if you found some people, like, like some students here, they were not serious and then mm -hmm. after your talk they become serious and mm -hmm. they, impa they, they get to realize that they have a role to play, mm -hmm. then that is the greatest thing. Thank you. Thing yeah. I you, you know, you know the, the, the greatest part of your job is uh, on the part of mobilization. Mm -hmm. How do you achieve this? Uh, on the part of mobilization, and I said, uh, on the same note, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a community fundraiser and mobilizer yes. at the same time. Yes. So on that note, I've been engaged in several things that do with the community. Mm -hmm. Apart from the Urafiku Jerumani side, at a personal level, I've been doing other things. Mm -hmm. And these include, I've been directly engaging the community on different aspects. And as a fundraiser and as a mobilizer, number one, as a fundraiser, I've been able to write grant proposals. Mm -hmm. And grant proposals include that you write to, to you write to an institution, mm -hmm. to a government institution, or to a donor mm -hmm. who can fund your activities, mm -hmm. and you do them efficiently. Mm -hmm. Currently, I've been able to get funding of my two donor proposals. Mm -hmm. Number one is that last year, when COVID had hit us as Kenyans so hard, I wrote a proposal, and a friend of mine from from, from Ireland mm -hmm. funded me. And I, I was able to provide foodstuffs mm -hmm. to 20 families, 20 vulnerable families in Kitui, mm -hmm. in, in two villages. Mm -hmm. that, that, is that, in, that one you did as a personal project? As a personal uh -huh. project. And this project, I adapted a uh, uh, household essential stimulus package. Mm -hmm. And it was made to cushion these families from anchor during the COVID-19 period. Pandemic Be period. Because I, I started it in June up to September. Mm -hmm. So I was doing it for a period of three months. Mm -hmm. So I was able to sustain some families, 20 families, for a period of mm -hmm. 20, three months. Mm -hmm. Number two, this year again I got a funding and I was able to build a house. I was able to build a house. This funding too, I also got it from my friend in Ireland after he had realized that I did a good job in assisting these people mm -hmm. to, to, to get, uh, to get, to, 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 to to, to have a good life during the COVID-19 period, mm -hmm. this friend decided again that he could also impact another person. And therefore, he, he, he provided some funding. Though it was not enough, I was able to mobilize mm -hmm. at the same time from my close family relatives. And I really thank them because they supported mm -hmm. me. And also my friends supported me. Some mm -hmm. of my friends who are dearly to me mm -hmm. supported me in various ways. Mm -hmm. And I was able to build a, a, one of the one of the old mothers, mm -hmm. old houses. grandmothers, yes, a I house. Saw, I saw you, yes. one you posted. Up to a tune of around 150,000 yes. shillings. Yes. Now, as a, as a practitioner in this field of uh, helping uh, the needy and uh, the deserving in the community, we mostly see the government uh, is mainly concerned with people living with uh, HIV, uh, HIV and AIDS, people living with the disability, which uh, the government used to do it before then. But then currently it's like there is some kind of laxity here. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the government is doing up to its mandate to support such vulnerable groups within the society? Uh, I think the government, our government is really trying. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I would really give them a clap mm -hmm. because I think they have tried their best. Mm -hmm. And the government has tried how it can to cushion these different groups from the shocks that emanate from their different hardships that they face in their daily lives. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just for example, and I just want to note to you mm -hmm. one of these programs, mm -hmm. including the cash transfers, mm -hmm. the cash transfers for orphans. 
and this includes orphans, those who are even living with HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. So the government has done very good in cash transfers. Mm -hmm. Even the cash transfers for the vulnerable groups such as such as uh, such as the Inwajami program mm -hmm. for the for the hot for the hot men and mm -hmm. women. Our show shows back at home in the village. They have been receiving this money mm -hmm. for Inwajami. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the government has also been trying to cushion different people out of their problems and everything. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have the Kazimtani Kazimtani initiative by, by, by the stimulus project mm -hmm. by the government, of which personally I've been involved in, by the time I was at home. Mm -hmm. And I think these were these are good programs that the government has been trying. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, just like I told you before. The government needs partners, the government needs stakeholders who can come in and assist them. Mm -hmm. And that is why we as Urafike Ujerumani and I can as a person, including my friends whom I have, we are doing what we can so that we can supplement the work of the government mm -hmm. to sustain these people. Because it is from we working together that we can see that most of these vulnerable groups can be able to achieve their purpose and, and their agenda at the end of the mm -hmm. day. Yes. You, know, you know, when helping people, uh, it said that you can't take help to people who are angry or rather don't have food. Mm -hmm. You see, the, kind, the, the, the current uh, situation in Kenya is that most youths, upon completion of school or upon completion of college, they don't have a place for jobs. How, 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 is, your, how is your organization intertwining in this to help these people actually achieve their dreams without actually waiting for employment? Okay, okay. Thank you, Mr. Francis, mm -hmm. Franklin Odwal. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, this is something I've done efficiently, mm -hmm. personally, and I just want to talk at my personal level. Mm -hmm. And I think for those who follow me on my social media platform, mm -hmm. I, I have one tag that is connecting youth to their dreams. And this is what I've been trying to do. Mm -hmm. And personally, as a person, I've realized most of the grassroots village young people are unemployed because they don't know that there are opportunities in which they can venture in mm -hmm. and get themselves to employ themselves and even get the government and the private sector employ themselves. And I want to give you a good example. Most of our young people in our grassroots villages, they don't know even when the government advertises maybe even the Kazimtani mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. Because a person is not interested. You mm -hmm. just want to go and stay in the market and wait for 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 Mweshimua to bring you some 10 shillings mm -hmm. and then Mweshimua kama hajakupea unaanza kumuuliza mm -hmm. like Mweshimua unatuacha hivyo tu mm -hmm. that mentality <laughs> like like they just want to be given mm -hmm. but i've been trying these young people whenever there is an advertisement on a job application especially now these jobs including like the Kazimtani mm -hmm. personally in my community i've been mobilizing the young people I've been calling them, I've been texting them. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we have an enrollment for the young people to join maybe Kazimtani, to join a program initiated by maybe by the village chief. Mm -hmm. I, I inform them because information is power. Mm -hmm. Once we have informed them, they can be able to be they can be able to apply for, for these jobs. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I've been able to assist young people get skills. Mm -hmm. And I just want to tell you how. Number one, I've told you about Personally, I'm, I'm doing a proposal which I call Learner Skill. Mm -hmm. And Learner Skill is targeting the young people who have just graduated from Form 4 or the, who did not get an opportunity even to join campus or college mm -hmm. so that they can get a technical skill. Mm -hmm. Because the world is turning technical. The world is changing. Because you find that even as most of the students learn in high schools, they mm -hmm. think that coming to the university is everything. It's a big achievement. It's a big achievement. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, that's not an achievement. Mm -hmm. Students and and the young people who are going to Tibet institutions, mm -hmm. which we have around the country, mm -hmm. are making a lot and are reaping a lot from, from, from these opportunities. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I assist the young people to apply for, for this Tibet for such opportunities for such opportunities to get mm -hmm. technical skills. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Currently, thank you. I've got sponsorship mm -hmm. and I've been able to assist people to get a scholarship by Safari Com Foundation, mm -hmm. a scholarship by CAP Empowerment mm -hmm. Institute. And through this, I've tried a lot and even assisted most of the, mm -hmm. the young people mm -hmm. to, to apply for youth fund, for weather fund. And I, 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 I look forward to continue doing this for the young people. Thank you so much, Mr. Ken Mutisia. I see you have a lot of projects that you're doing, but then my director is telling me that uh, we are actually out of time. Now we'll have to cut it uh, there. But uh, before we cut it, uh, maybe just your parting shots uh, in two seconds. Yes. Mm -hmm. So my parting shot, of which I would like to refer even from my notebook, because I, I had <laughs> a very good parting shot for you. Yes. And 
I, I'm a good friend of Professor Pierre Olumuma. Yes, yes, yes. And I really follow him so mm -hmm. much. And in one of the conferences, as he was submitting, he once said that uh, the world has seen so many comedians. The world now mm -hmm. needs actors. Mm -hmm. My dear friends, young people outside there in the country, in your different universities, we need to be actors. We need to be actors and know that we can be the only change we wish to see in the community, just like Matt Mangadi quotes it. My dear friends, we can be the change we, we wish to see if we package ourselves in the right way and in the right way possible. So I just want to encourage each and every one of our young people out there, the university students, I want to challenge all of us here, that let us be the agents of change in our communities. You can create, mm -hmm. just create a ripple. You also, this PLO once also says that... <laughs> Re the remember drop, your two seconds is about yeah, to yes, get yes, over. Yes, 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 I'm finishing. <laughs> yes. The drop, that will make the ocean overflow. Mm -hmm. Let us be the drop that will make the ocean overflow. Mm -hmm. Thank you for hosting me. <laughs> and I'm, I know, I know I'm, you're, I'm very you're, you're feeling like we could be having 10 hours. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I, I'm, very, I'm, I'm very thankful <laughs> for those hours. <laughs> and I, I look forward to engaging you maybe in the future. Yes, we also Thank look forward much. to working with you in the future, Mr. Ken. Uh, Kennedy Mutisia, Joseph. Yes. Bright Minds from Kitui County. Yes. What a fantastic show, our viewer. This is the Mara Eye. We've really had a very fruitful and a very engaging discussion with Mr. Kennedy Joseph Mutisia. Thank you for staying up to date. I'm Franco Duor and this is the Mara Eye. Goodbye.